Good evening, everyone. So good to be back with you tonight, and I appreciate you being a part of Kingsway Church and uh, and f- tuning in with us tonight to be a part of midweek message. It is always an honor to get to bring you the Word of God, and I totally am excited about getting to spend a little bit of, of your Wednesday evening with you. Hey, we started last week talking about being led by the Spirit of God. You know, the Bible tells us that we're that the Holy the Holy Ghost will be our guide, and then He says over in John chapter fourteen that He will also teach us. So He's He is His intention is to be a guide to us. And the God, as we talked about last week, always gets out in front. And so um, if he's in front of you, that means that he can show you the way to go. But then he also said that he would teach us and he would give us uh, uh, understanding about things that we should understand. And so we're in a world today where, gosh, boy, do we ever need guidance? Do we ever need direction? We need help from God. Can you all uh, say amen to that? We're in a place to where if we try to navigate life totally on our own, man, it's going to be a lot harder road. But if we recognize that we need the help of the Holy Spirit, look to Him and learn to understand what His voice sounds like, how that He speaks to us, the type of verbiage that He uses. The, the you know internally the peace we talked about last week is how that when he deals with us about doing something or not doing something there always comes with it a sense of peace even if it's a difficult you know I didn't say that last week but even in difficult times if it's a difficult decision meaning knowing that it's something might even be harder you know the, the Holy Spirit doesn't always give you the easiest thing in the world to do it, it may even seem hard you know, and seem like there's it's a longer, harder road if you go this direction or make that decision. But here's the thing, even in those harder times, it'll still come with peace. You'll still have a sense of peace about it. And so we talked all about this to, to kind of get us going last week. I want to open this evening in the book of John, John chapter 15, and I want to start reading with verse 17 here. I, I really feel like this is a big thing today. And I'll get to that in just a minute. But in verse 17, it says, This I command you, that you love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, since I chose you out of the world, the world therefore hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my words, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have sinned. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me my, uh, hates my father also. If I had not performed among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and hated both my father and me. But that, but that the word which is written in their law might be fulfilled, they hated me without a cause. But when the counselor or the, the comforter, the Holy Spirit, comes, whom I shall send to you, from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness of me, and you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Now, I want to read uh, chapter John, uh, John 16. I want to read this out of the King James Version in verse 1. In verse 1, it says, These things have I spoken unto you. So in other words, everything that he just got done telling us, the world's going to hate you because you're not of the world. And the world's going to you know, have a difficult time with you. And you've got to separate yourself uh, largely from the world, what he's trying to say. I mean, you're in the world. You're still a part of that. But you're not, you don't do things necessarily as the world does them. He says, these things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. 
These things I told you, love. He started out in verse 17 by saying, I command you this, that you love one another. And then he goes on talking about how the world's going to hate you. And then he comes back, and, and in chapter 16, is not really a new thought. It's still part of the same thought here. These things have I spoken unto you, the things that I just said, so that you should not be offended. So in other words, the Lord is trying to say, I don't want you to be led by offense. How many times in our lives have we been offended by something that someone said or something someone did? We thought that, you know, how dare they, you know, what are they, why would they do this? That's offensive to me. And then we make decisions based upon just that offense that, we, that we've experienced, what we've went through. And he's trying to tell us here that we're not to be offended, that we should not be offended. And folks, I believe in the world today that we get so easily offended so quickly. We allow ourselves to be uh, led by something that is the Lord is is clearly showing us that we should not, uh, we should not uh, allow that to happen. He even gives us a, 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 a definition of this in the Strong's Concordance. It says, "Offend means to displeasure, to have anger, or to be in shock or stung." See, sometimes when we get offended, it, it's a, there has a certain sting to it, and offense really has one purpose, and that's to cause you to lose your faith. And if you allow yourself to be led by every time that you get offended, you go, you know, and you do something in response to that offense, then you're not being led by the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes the easiest thing to do is like when your neighbor does something negative to you, you want to do something negative to your neighbor, Right? And, and, and so it, it's like a chain reaction. It causes you to respond based in, on what they did in like kind. But what if we consulted with the Holy Spirit? What if we asked the Holy Spirit, how should I, how should I respond in this situation? And then your response is no longer based upon the act or the occurrence that took place to you, but rather your response now is coming from the Holy Spirit who has a greater insight as to what you need, what everybody else needs, and how and what will be the most beneficial thing for you. And when the Holy Spirit deals with us about responding to offensive situations in our lives, he's not just thinking about your poor pitiful feelings because, folks, that's what we usually end up basing decisions on is how I feel. I'm offended, you hurt me, you hurt my feelings, and so therefore, here's my response. That's why it's all, the Bible says, be slow to anger, you know, and, and, and quick to forgive. You, we, we, we should be very slow, and he also tells us be slow to speak and, and quick to, to hear. But we're so quick to want to say what the first thing comes into our mind. We're so quick to want to respond to anything negative that happens to us because we're like, we, we just feel like we need to bounce, bounce something back. But the Holy Spirit is trying to tell us to relax just a little bit and, and consult with Him. And, you know, folks, if we would do that more often and, and, and allow the Spirit of God to give us insight, because remember, He said that He'll guide you. Does that mean that He'll guide you in what to say and how to respond? For sure. What about, he said, I also I'll teach you of things to come. How about he teaches us the right responses that when we're in a situation that, that our flesh wants to jump out and say something, do something, someone does something to me, and so therefore it's kind of like an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. You hurt me, I will hurt you. You say this about me, I will say this about you. And... Uh, that's not necessarily the way the Lord wants to respond. You know, I'm not saying that sometimes that someone might need to be dealt with in a corrective matter. They may, and it might be harsh, you know, for them to feel and hear that. But before we just lash out and respond back in a way like that, it's always the heart of God for us to consult with Him so that He can give us insight and direction on how it is and what it is that we should say. And so when we look to him and look to, to the responses that he would want us to be able to say, then we know that the, the direction that we're going is in, in uh, essence, we're following the direction of the Holy Spirit. We're, we're taking his lead and his guide and using that as a response for our life. Now, I recall back in the book of Matthew, and you'll remember this too, 
there was a lady that came with an alabaster box and she broke the box. It was very expensive and it was hers to do with what she wanted. But she broke this alabaster box open full of ointment and she began to anoint Jesus' feet with this perfume. And there was a buzz among the disciples. They knew that this was like a very, very expensive uh, 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 container of, of perfume. And, you know, they began to talk among themselves and they began to say, uh, why was this not given, sold and given to the poor? We could have helped the poor. Now, one of the key people that was involved in this conversation was Judas. Now, I want to turn over and let me just look at that. I think that'll be worth us taking just a minute so that I can get to, to a point here that I want you to see. In Matthew chapter 26, let me find it here really quick. And so this lady breaks it open, says in verse 14, well, let me, before we get to 14, let me just start here in verse 8. It says, When his disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, For what purpose is this waste, this ointment? It could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. When Jesus perceived it, he said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? First of all, it was hers. Can't she do with what she wants? Why is it any of your business what anybody else does with their money? And folks, when you start getting other people's business, start saying, This is, not, this is off subject just a minute, but it'll be good for you to hear. It's none of your business what anybody else does with their money. It's not yours. It's not your decision to, to, to critique or condemn anybody for spending their money on what they want to spend their money on. Now, I said that. He said, he perceived it, and he said to them, Why do you trouble this woman? She's done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, but you do not always have me. In pouring this ointment, my body, she did it for a burial. Truly I say to you, Wherever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will be told in memory. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests, and he said to them, What will you give me if I hand him over to you? Now, this is what I want you to see. It appears based upon this scripture that as soon as Jesus corrects them, See, the disciples are walking with Jesus. They, you know, and he's, he's the big guy. He's the, he's the guy that's leading it. He's, he's got massive crowds. And they're, these 12 disciples are somebody in, in the eyes of the people because they look to Jesus and they go, wow, he heals the sick, raises the dead, casts out devils. I mean, this, this guy, he's a rock star, so to speak. And then he's got his guys, his inner circle there, the 12 disciples around him, they're somebody. And so they're chastising this woman. You could have sold this and given it to the poor. Why didn't you do that? I don't understand this. Now, we know that heart of Judas was just so that he could have extra money to steal. We, we know that based upon the scriptures. But I want you to notice this. Jesus corrects them right in front of everybody. And sometimes when we get correction, now I'm not suggesting we always go correct somebody right in the middle of other people. We, sometimes it's like it, it's worthy to pull somebody aside. But sometimes, sometimes Jesus did it. He, he right, apparently right in front of the, the, the whole group, he corrects the ones. And Judas wasn't the only one because notice this, it says, when Jesus perceived it, he said to them, when his disciples saw it, they were indignant. When his disciples, that means more than one. And then when Jesus perceived it, he said to them, it didn't say he said to him. So he's talking to multiple disciples that thought that the right thing to do was to sell the perfume and give it to the poor. So there's a number of them that felt that way. And Jesus says to them, why are you bothering this lady? She's done some, uh, something good for me. You always had the poor with you, but you don't always have me. And pouring the ointment out on my body, she did it for a barrel. Truly I say that wherever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will be told in a memory of her, in memory of her. So that's a correction. And folks, people don't like to be corrected. Because you know what correction carries with it? Correction carries with it the thought that I am wrong or I was wrong. 
And we hate to be wrong as people. But it all, this all reverts back to our pride. And folks, pride is one of the ugliest, nastiest things that you can allow to, to reside in, in your body. Pride is to be dealt with. Yes, I understand it's to be dealt with daily. But pride is an ugly thing. And it is something you can't allow to, to take residence inside of you because it'll cause you to do things like this. Judas's pride is hurt because he's been corrected in front of a crowd. He didn't like being corrected in front of a crowd. His heart is obviously not right that he's stealing money from the offering plate, right? So his heart's not right. But this just adds insult to injury to Judas, and he gets offended that how dare you correct me in front of all these people. And what does he run and do? Because it says... When Jesus said this, now notice the very next verse, 14, then one of the 12, who's called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said to them, what will you give me if I hand him over to you? It really wasn't just about the money for Judas. He is a thief and he is, he's a covetous uh, man. But it was more than that. It was his pride as well because he allowed his pride to allow him to become offended that how dare he correct me in front of these crowd and he walks out being offended. Now Judas is led by his offense. Now what if Judas had said, let me consult just a minute. Now I know the Holy Spirit had not been sent at this moment, but could he have done something similar in this? Could he have not went to the Lord Jesus and said, Lord, I'm hurt, I'm offended that you corrected me in front of these people and uh, I, I, I had, you know, I've, I've had the wrong heart to do the things that I wanted to do with it, but why would you do that? Or it, it just, just to, to consult. And how many of you believe that if he had done that, would Jesus have been honest with him, even though he still would have been honest in, in, in telling him why? Would, he, would it have shown the love? And would he have recognized that Jesus did, did it out of love for him? Folks, when we're, when we're corrected, especially by the Word of God or by the Spirit of God, it's because there's a reason for it. God doesn't want us just to be wrong just because he doesn't want us to be wrong. He does it because he knows that you're on the wrong path. And wrong thinking and wrong decisions ultimately have consequences attached to it and it can cause pain and suffering in your life and the Lord wants to help us. Judas gets corrected because he's going down the wrong path. And what the Lord really wanted to do is to shake him up to think about it where he begins to think and, and could have ultimately potentially came to the conclusion, I shouldn't have. Why did I care about that? that that's that woman's money anyway, and all I was going to do is steal it anyway. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't be like this. She was doing it to bless my master, my, the one that I follow, the one that I started out following with an intention thinking that he was the one and then I've gotten off track what if he'd have thought like that well see that's what the Holy Spirit today helps us to do when we have potential uh, uh, opportunities to be offended if we consult with the Holy Spirit over those potential opportunities of being offended the Spirit of God will help us to grow up and say no you can't be offended don't let offense direct how you respond here's what you do and the Spirit of God will talk to us and give us insight. But if we always allow offense to lead us and guide us, I promise you, every time, if you're listening to your flesh because it was offended, it'll always cause you to do something that is contrary to the Word of God because offense is not of God. Do you remember uh, John the Baptist? John the Baptist was with Jesus when Jesus came onto the scene. And John saw Jesus, and he said something like, Behold, look, the Lamb of God who takes, the sin, takes the, the sin of the world away, the sins from people, takes them away. He said, I'm not even worthy to unlatch his shoelace. And Jesus was coming to be baptized of John, and John said, I shouldn't be baptizing you. You should be baptizing me. John had a recognition at that moment, a revelation from God himself that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah. He has that moment. But there comes a time over in uh, Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Now watch this. I'm going to help you here. Now John's in prison, verse 2. When John heard in prison, 
Everybody say, John is in prison. When he heard in prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and he said to him, Are you he who should come who should come, or should we look for another? Now John knows the answer to this already, deep down, because he, he's the one that recognized you're the Christ. You're you you are the Messiah. He's already acknowledged him as that on their first meeting. Now watch what Jesus says. Correction coming. Just make a little note. Correction coming, correction coming, correction coming. Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up. The poor have the gospel preached to them. Blessed is he who does not fall away because of me. Now, that, again, sounds a little bit hard to understand. So what I want to do, I want to go over to Matthew chapter 11, verse 6, in the ampl- or, I'm sorry, in the King James. And Jesus said, And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So Jesus is essentially telling him, you go tell John all the things that you're seeing. And he's essentially saying, do you think anybody else can do this? Can anybody restore hearing and sight to the blind? Um, can anybody cause a lame man to walk? Can anybody uh, uh, cleanse a leper or cause the deaf to hear? Can anybody raise the dead? Can anybody just uh, have the poor, the gospel preached to the poor? And then he says, but blessed are those that hear and are not offended in me. In other words, he's correcting John lovingly. Tell John that he's being offended and blessed is he. Now watch. Let me, let me read that one more time. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. What if you are offended in Jesus and you're allowing offense to guide your decisions and your actions. Would it be a fair statement to say the opposite? If this is true, blessed is he who shall not be offended in me. Is it a fair statement to say the opposite, that he's not blessed, whoever is offended in him? I believe that it is. So he's saying, John, get this fixed, get this corrected. Don't be offended in me. Now he goes on and brags on John right after that. He's an awesome man, none greater than him before that that moment because he recognized John's a great man. He recognized he's human and he still has the same capacity that me and you have and that is to allow ourselves by our flesh when we're under pressure to be led by our offense rather than to be led by the Holy Spirit. See, if that was me or you in that position and we're allowing ourselves or we're starting to allow ourselves to be led by our offense, what should we do? And I submit to you this evening that what you should do is consult with the Holy Spirit, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you, give you direction. And I believe if that had been the case in John's time, if he could have done that, I believe the Holy Spirit would have confirmed to him, yes, you don't need to ask. You don't even need to ask your disciples, is this the one? You know he's the one right now. You know that he's doing and he's setting the stage for what is going to ultimately change humanity, the outcome of humanity. And folks, we might not be living in that kind of uh, 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 magnitude as far as literally changing the world, but I will submit to you it does change your world. When you submit... To, the, to hearing the Holy Spirit rather than submitting to allowing yourself to be offended so easily. So what I want you to understand this evening as I get ready to close, I want you to understand that your pride has to be set aside so that when you're under attack from, from the thought of being offended, no matter what it is, folks, people do dumb things sometimes, People do things that you didn't think that they would do. It's easy to be offended in today's society. But I I submit to you, don't be offended to the point to where it causes your response to come forth based on the thing that was offensive to you. Consult with the Holy Spirit, because if you do, then you're being led by your offense. 
consult with the Holy Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you, allow the Holy Spirit to teach you so that you can respond the according way that God would have you to respond. And when you're listening to Him, listen, everything's going to work out all right. Your pride does not always have to win. We think sometimes we always have to have the last word. We've got to have the last, you know, the, the last mm, gouge in some, in some situation. Well, folks, that's more concerned about being right than what is right. God's not always concerned about you being right as much, he, as much as he is about what is right. And sometimes what is right is entirely different than what is, what's right. Amen. So I encourage you, be led by the Holy Spirit. Seek the counsel of the Holy Spirit. Listen to him speak to you on the inside, that, that still small voice. And, and with that, it'll also bring peace, just like we talked about last week. Don't let your, your uh, offense, their times of potential offense, be the thing that guides you. But let the Holy Spirit be the one that guides you. Amen. Praise God. Well, I hope this has been a blessing to you this evening. Thank you for just uh, tuning in with me for a few minutes this evening. I want to invite you to come out and be a part of Kingsway Church this Sunday, 1030. We have a wonderful service every Sunday. We have outstanding praise and worship, and we have outstanding people that will love you and care for you. If you don't have a home church, we invite you to come out. If you're watching tonight and you do have a home church, then folks, go out and support your home church. Be a blessing to them. Be a blessing to your pastor. They need you and they, they need your support. They need you to uplift them and pray for them and, and to support what God has called them to do and be a part of the plan of God. Amen. Be an extension of the work that's being done. And so we encourage you to come out, uh, go to your church if, if you have a home church. If you don't, come out to Kingsway Church. We'll love on you. We'll make you feel right at home. And I'm praying that until I get to be with you again next time, I'm praying that God's very best will be yours. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.